Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 says that God sends angels to assist those who are to inherit salvation. Now listen, we can talk all day long about discerning demons. And that's mostly how we've applied the gift of discernment. But let me just challenge you for a minute and say that there were twice as many angels as there are demons. Only a third of the angels fell. That means that angels outnumber demons two to one. So we ought to be seeing angel activity twice as often as we're seeing demonic activity. We need to be discerning what the angels are doing over a region. I love what Apostle Peter said. He said, Lord, we pray that there's a ladder here, that angels are ascending and descending. How many believe that you can actually pray that God would create a portal over your state, create a portal over your church, create a portal over your region, that angels are ascending and descending? We've got to discern angelic activity without getting weird. Look at your neighbor and say, quit being weird. Okay, no. How many know that God is increasing angelic activity? And as watchmen, we've got to be able to know not just what demons are doing, we've got to know what angels are doing. Beyond that, we've got to know what God is doing. Because do you realize that God will allow darkness to cause light to shine brighter? God wants to show the watchmen how to position ourselves, how to pray prayers that bring heaven down. God wants to show watchmen how to move in a way that we cooperate with God's heavenly mandate. And we pull it. Jesus taught us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done where? Where? In New Jersey? In New York? In this region? As it is in heaven. What that literally means in Greek is that he's, he teaches them to pray, Lord, superimpose heaven on earth. In other words, make New Jersey look like heaven. It's the garden state, so. The world, we got to get over this, guys. The world does not belong to the devil. He's the God of this world, but that refers to the world's systems. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all they that dwell therein. Watchmen and prophets discern what is necessary to open the heavens and pull heaven down to earth. In Isaiah chapter 45, verse 8, it says this, Rain down you heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness. That's the picture of an open heaven. Do you realize open heaven is not blue skies? Open heaven is rain because rain is what produces the harvest. Rain down you heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open and let righteousness spring up. Listen, We've been around long enough to hear all kinds of messages about open heavens. But I am no longer satisfied to talk about an open heaven that doesn't manifest in an open earth. If we've really got an open heaven, that means things are shifting, things are changing in the earth realm. Come on, an open heaven will produce an open earth. Say that with me, open heaven, open earth. Open heaven, open earth. We've got to get a view that we don't just want to sing about, pray about, prophesy about an open heaven. We want to see that open heaven manifested in change in the earth realm. Transformation of a territory. So, we moved to Florida 38 years ago. We moved between Panama City Beach and Fort Walton Beach in the panhandle of Florida, the world's most beautiful beaches. Our sand literally looks like a packet of sugar that's been poured in your hand. 
that's what our sand looks like. It's absolutely breathtaking, stunning. When our children were little, we would dress them up in winter coats and put them on the beach and take pictures of them. It looked like they were in the snow, okay? It was the sand, okay? But that you get desperate when you're in Florida, okay? So it was a beautiful place, beautiful, beautiful place, but completely undeveloped. When we moved to where God moved us to, we quickly discovered that our area, our territory, was completely overrun with cults and occult groups. Satanists, pagans, Santeria voodoo cults, witches' covens, psychic healers, psychic gurus, kind of you name it, we had it. You have to understand, there was nothing else there. It was just that. And God took this little pioneering prophetic ministry, dropped us down into a territory completely overrun by the spirit of witchcraft. And our prophetic word was basically fight or die. (laughs) Or leave. We had decapitated animals thrown on the doorstep of our church, thrown on the doorstep of our home, sacrificial blood spilled out on our property, curses written on our buildings. It freaked me out. I was like running to my Bible college books, like, where did they talk about this in class? They do not teach you this in Bible college. So what do you do? The Lord said to me one day, why are you so freaked out about this? He said, when are you going to believe greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world? When are you going to believe that one drop of the blood of Jesus is greater and mightier than any blood oath or blood sacrifice the enemy could possibly spill out against you? One drop of the blood of Jesus can break the power of the curse. I had to change my perspective. We had demons, astro- demons or humans, something, astral projecting into our homes. Beings. I didn't know anything about any of this. And we understood that we had to make a stand. And we fought, we prayed, we prayer walked, we did prophetic acts, we took communion on the land, we went out to strategic places, we worked the land, we walked the land, we warred over the land. We were diligent to care for the area that God had given us. Not just hide out in the four walls of the church, but actually get out there and start speaking something different over our territory. One by one, those groups moved out. I'm telling you, one by one, literally, um, and those groups actually know that they could no longer operate because of what that little church over there was doing. They actually know that. So that's why they started showing up at our meetings. Okay? Over a period of time, we saw every one of those groups leave. But then we had to deal with what was entrenched with them in the land, which was a spirit of poverty. And listen, New Jersey has a lot of wealth, but there's a spirit of poverty here. Because wealth isn't about how much money you have in the bank. Poverty is about that robbery that we talked about last night. God wants to break the spirit of robbery and the spirit of poverty. God wants to break the spirit so that New Jersey can come into the destiny and the purpose and the calling that God has called it to. To to have a wealth creation anointing, a wealth creation state that breaks Poverty on every level. Spiritual poverty, it breaks the darkness, it breaks off the things that where the enemy robs from us, okay? 